Today I'm going to show you how I made a giant 8 foot tall mechanical puppet. A few years ago, some friends and I wrote a full-length stage puppet musical called The Wizard of Claws. In that show, I had to make a bunch of puppets, but three of them were gigantic puppets. One of them even being an eight-foot-tall snowman. And if you want to see these puppets in action, we did a live beta performance a couple years ago. We uploaded the entire production to YouTube. You can check it out right here or in the link below. Now, taking on these builds was no small feat, and I had a couple things going against me. First, this was very early in my puppet building career. If I was to rebuild these now, I do things a little bit different. Secondly, when you build a puppet at this scale, things change. You can't just use foam as the structure of a puppet. You have to essentially create a foam frame or scaffolding out of metal inside the puppet so it can support its own weight. And even though you're doing that, you still want to make it as light as possible to not put too much strain on your performer. So there's a lot to take into account. Not to mention my shoestring budget and having virtually no time to do it. But I was able to get through it and the show turned out great, so please make sure if you get a chance to check it out. It's kind of become a nice little holiday tradition with my family to watch it. I think you guys will enjoy it too. But anyway, let's talk about this build. I was going through my computer and I found a bunch of old footage of this build. You'll notice I look pretty different. Like I said, this was a while ago. It was so long ago that I even had black hair. All right, let's start off with the snowman. His name is Dry Clean Only. If you want to find out why, you have to check out the show. But the first thing I did was to build this frame. And as you can see, that frame is attached to a drum harness. Uh, I just built out that frame with aluminum. I used an aluminum rod and some aluminum uh, strips to create this kind of structure. And I'm kind of doing a movement test now to see how it would obstruct my walking and some of my movement. If I want this character to turn around, I can't just turn around. I have to walk all the way around it and kind of isolate his body just to get him to turn around. These are things you have to think about with a big puppet that you don't normally have to think about with the small ones. And here I just added on the foam and it added on not too much more weight, but definitely a little bit noticeable. But the biggest problem is how much it now obstructs your vision. I could see through that cage before, but I can't see through this. The next step is to create the mouth mechanism for the head and as you can see I've got something rigged up here and then the next step is to cover that with foam and to see if that foam will restrict it at all and that's what you're seeing here Testing one, two, three. Testing. Now, obviously, that's a little squeaky. <laughs> you might be wondering why I decided to use a metal hinge there instead of uh, a regular hinge like a puppet, and that's just because of the scale of this puppet. You need something beefier and stronger, so it just takes a little bit of WD-40 to get rid of that squeak. This is kind of a cool angle, too. You can kind of see inside the puppet, and you can see that the performer's hand goes inside to control the mouth movement, but also there's a trigger in there, and when I turn my entire wrist, the puppet's head can actually move left and right to have it look in different directions, and because it's just a single pole going down the middle, I can also kind of tilt the head to get some other expressions that worked out really well in the show. And next I went on to covering the head with fur. And as you can see here, this was actually before I changed it. There's two rods that the head is on. I ended up on a single rod in the middle for the final version of the head. But the mechanics of this are exactly the same. Oh yeah, cool And here's a quick clip of the performer showing some kids how it works. So here, check this out. So the mouth moves with this trigger mechanism right here. It's connected to, it's actually a guitar string running all the way up to a spring up to his mouth. Next, I made these humongous boots for the snowman. Now, I wish I had more footage of this, but uh, it's actually the same exact process to making a puppet. I sculpted the boot out of clay and then made a pattern and then built it out of foam. To attach this to the performer's feet, I actually used a steel toe boot insert that I bolted to the toe of that shoe, and the other end was attached to a piece of wood that acted as the sole of the boot. And here the actor is trying on the puppet to practice some blocking. As you can see, it's also covered with fur, and the boots were also covered at this point as well. His arms and mittens were just a foam on a stick, and then the facial features were just carved out of foam as well and then attached. And now you get to kind of see it all put together with a little bit of movement. I'm not a 
afraid of this Krampus. <gasps> oh, you should be. She's mean and magical and powerful. The next puppet character is the reindeer named Antler. Now, this one was a very different build in a lot of ways. I started off the way I normally do, doing a clay sculpture. This was very rough, just to get kind of the silhouette I was looking for. But I quickly found out that that clay and pattern making process was not going to work for this. So instead, I went on to kind of making a beta version out of some foam, tape, and paper, and a couple yardsticks. Here I was testing out how I expected the puppet to be operated. This is what I tested first with the performer on the side. And you could get a lot of really cool movements out of this puppet that way. However, I noticed that anytime the character was facing the other way, obviously the performer would be covering it. So then I tried another option, which did end up being the option that we went for. And if I did this again, I would probably actually build two or three puppets, one for each different angle, one for the puppet facing left, one for the puppet facing right, and one being the way I actually ended up building the puppet. Now, I was planning on using that green foam, but it ended up being too heavy. So I made this frame instead out of Luan and then made two foam shells to go on each side that ended up being a lot lighter and I have that little handle there so it could be held the exact same way. Then I moved on to covering the whole thing with fur. There's actually no structure in the legs. They're just fur tubes that are stuffed with fiber fill. That gave them the maximum amount of flexibility. Now the technique for the neck and the head is actually a technique that I used before and to test it out I actually took the head from that puppet. It's a giant polar bear that I built for uh, another show called The Littlest Snow Monster which I'm sure I will be releasing at another date so make sure to stay tuned. But anyway the test worked out perfect so then I started building Antler's head. Once I had most of the puppet put together, it was fun to really start experimenting with the different types of movements that this character could make. And even like fun little hoof movements that could make fun noises and really bring this character to life in ways that I couldn't have discovered other than by just playing with it. And this is the actor Matt using the puppet for the very first time. You can see he's definitely adjusting to it. Once you get the hang of it, it's like riding a bike. No, no, no. I never smile. Why were they bothering you? Because I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> no, you're not. You're a reindeer. <laughs> and then there's the puppet named Candy. Now, I saved this one for last because I thought it was going to be the easiest because it's just kind of like a long pole. But it ended up being one of the most difficult. Um, there's some, definitely some things in this I would change. Uh, however, again, given the time restraint and resources I had, I'm still really happy with how it ended up turning out. Now, this was the pattern piece that I drafted. I cut it out of L200 foam probably like six or seven times and butted them together uh, kind of like this, and it ended up with this spoon shape. But then I realized that was way too stiff, so I cut off the head and made it out of a softer foam. And then I also kind of made her have a, a knee joint in the middle of the body that allowed her to flex a lot more, and that worked much better. Then it was time to cover her in fabric. I just draped the fabric around her and stitched it up the back, and then wrapped around a red piece of velvet to act as her stripe some giant foam Easter eggs for eyes. And then this was the part that I was most proud of was her hair, because that's a sculpted piece of foam that I did. I'd never done hair in this way, but I was really happy with how that turned out. And then the longer ponytail are actually tubes of insulation foam. They're really skinny kind, and it worked out perfect for her hair. Especially since she has no arms and legs, whipping her hair around is kind of the only choreography she can really do. I hope the wizard isn't scary. I don't think he is. From what I've heard, he's a jolly wizard. Yeah. Jolly, huh? Ugh, I'm tired. Can we go to sleep? We have had a long day. Oh, Candy. So those were all the big puppets in the show, but there even are a few more other smaller puppets in the show too. Now if those big puppets weren't enough to convince you, let me tell you a little bit more about the show. It's about a little girl named Sally. It's only one day. It's just a Sally is a spunky 12-year-old girl who's feeling a little left out. Her parents just had another baby and have not been paying as much attention to Sally. Not right now, Sally, your mother and I are talking. Michael, I am under enough stress as it is with the baby. The least you could have done was to put up the Christmas lights. Mom, let's make snow angels. <sighs> Sally, go outside and play. Your father and I are talking. Frustrated with her parents, Sally heads outside to start making a snowman. A 
sudden storm takes Sally to a gray world, a place of mystery and magic, a winter wonderland. Oh no, the snowflakes aren't being very nice. There she meets a snowman who goes with her along this magical journey to Claus. You're not by yourself. Who said that? I did. He made the frozen magic a nuts and bolts shovel. Along her journey, Sally finds a magical shovel, but suddenly the evil Krampus arrives and demands that Sally hand over the shovel to her. I don't want to melt, but you can't give her the shovel. It would be, oh, snow brain, snow brain, bad, very bad. Oh, oh, I'm starting to... Armed with the power of the shovel, Sally continues her journey and meets some new friends, too. The power will carry us through. They need to make their way to the city of Claus to warn the wizard about Krampus before it's too late. Along the way, Sally learns the true meaning of friendship and family. It's definitely worth checking out. I'd really love to know what you guys think about the show if you watch it. And we would love another opportunity to put this on stage again or maybe even in some other form. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of the show and the behind the scenes. All the links are down below and I'll see you next time.